In this video, we're gonna quickly go over the different load sensing options within Holly EFI. They actually give you a handful of different choices, which is really nice. So for different engine combinations and different situations, you have different things to choose from. I personally prefer to use volumetric efficiency for just about everything that I do, but that does not mean that that's better or worse than any of the other options. So whichever one you're most familiar with is the one that I would encourage you to use. I feel so strongly about volumetric efficiency compared to the other options personally, that I'm gonna make a separate video after this one explaining why, but by all means, just because that's what I choose to use, don't think that that's what you need to choose. But the purpose of the video that I'm gonna make is basically gonna show you why I, choose, I prefer to use that option. But that's enough of that. Let's dive into our load sensing options and go over each one of them. So this file that's open right now is just a generic Holly base map. Uh, if you go here to the system ICF and then engine parameters, uh, you will find your load sensing right here. Um, the load sensing is one of the most important and one of the first things that you need to choose when getting ready to start a car, uh, especially if you're starting from scratch. If we click our little drop down, you'll see we have a handful of different options here. Uh, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Speed density, uh, when you click on a new one, you can just click yes to change the axes or whatever the hell it's telling you to do. So if we go to speed density, and we go to our fuel table. Uh, you can see here that all of the table values are in pounds per hour. Uh, and you can see we have very, very small numbers down here and very, very high numbers right here. So there's a huge range of you know numerical difference there. This is probably the most popular within Holly EFI that I see the most guys using. Um, I think one aspect of that is because it is the most simple. Another aspect is a lot of guys are going from factory GM ECUs over to Holly, and in a GM ECU, you're either math based or speed density based, meaning you're either using mass airflow sensor or a manifold air pressure sensor. So kind of naturally you would think like, okay, I'm using a map sensor, I'm gonna use speed density. Volumetric efficiency will actually just use the map sensor as well. So by doing the fuel table in pounds per hour, it's basically one step away from giving out a raw pulse width value. So by the fuel table being in pounds per hour, it's what you would consider to be a time-based fuel strategy, basically meaning that you're just telling the fuel injector how much to flow. There isn't really a whole lot of behind the scenes math going on past that. What this, Holly is actually the, the one and only system that I've seen that uses pound per hour. Actual injector pulse width in this table is far more common. You'll see that in a lot of different ECUs. If you know roughly how much horsepower the car is gonna make, what fuel it's on, and your brake specific fuel consumption, you can fill this table out based off of all of that stuff. So you'll have to do a bunch of math on the front side of it and then input the numbers. Now if we go back to our engine parameters, we switch from speed density to VE base. Now you can see that these numbers are much smaller and you can also see that the math doesn't always work out just to convert a file from one load type to another. Uh, so we have some gigantic kind of numbers that don't make sense down here. Uh, this bottom row down here is nowhere remotely close. Uh, so let's just for the hell of it. Now, I would say that these values still are nowhere remotely close to right, so maybe this isn't the best example in the world as far as that goes, but you can see our, our highest values here are just over 100, uh, and then our lower values are here in the 30s, which is maybe even a little bit low. So, like our numerical range is, is much smaller in volumetric efficiency. Again, I'm gonna go into this a lot deeper in the next video. Uh, but I prefer to use volumetric efficiency because at that point we're letting the ECU do a whole bunch of math for us. We do not need to know how much horsepower the car is going to make. And you can almost transfer any VE table that works into another vehicle as to where the pounds per hour, those numbers are going to be drastically different. And part of the volumetric efficiency actually takes target air fuel ratio into account. So you can change your target air fuel ratio and it doesn't ask you for any other information. Um, again, if we go back to speed density, and then we go to our target air fuel ratio and we change this. 
you see this this warning pops up target air fuel ratio has changed would you like to change the fuel map uh, so basically if you take 10% away from your target air fuel ratio then you're going to need to take 10% out of your fuel map in the next video i'll show some examples of why volumetric efficiency base makes a whole lot more sense to me personally especially on turbocharged cars uh, it really can save a ton of time but that's enough about that so if we go back to our load sensing options here the next one we have is alpha n it's a little bit of a weird name but the big thing to look at here is we're still in pounds per hour but now over here instead of manifold pressure is our y-axis it's actually in throttle percentage given that this series is labeled how to tune holly terminator x for beginners i don't think very many of you are going to be using this alpha n style fuel uh, load sensing uh, you are generally going to be using Alpha N on a car with a just obnoxiously large cam large camshaft that basically pulls no vacuum, in which case you 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 lose 90% of your table. You know the thing might idle at 70 kPa and it can only go to 100 on a naturally aspirated car, so your table becomes really really small and you don't have a lot of resolution. As to where if you do throttle position based, now you have all of this different. Kind of meat to choose from it takes a lot longer to tune a car alpha n and they can be finicky and i think a big part of why they're so finicky is usually you're using this in an application where the camshaft again is really large or sometimes we'll use these on cars with individual throttle bodies i don't see that on the domestic side of things too much but it's pretty common over in the import world and again just the standard alpha n is still using pounds per hour for fueling and if you look over here we can see alpha n idle fuel is grayed out and that's where our next option comes into play so if we go from alpha n down to combo uh, it's going to be a combination of speed density and alpha n so now our fuel table looks uh, just as it would if this was just a speed density to base table but now we have this option right here for alpha n idle fuel which is basically just giving us a very small table uh, that we can use for either just idling or maybe just up to a certain throttle percentage, whether that wants to be 20%, 30%, whatever, or maybe below 3000 RPM. Basically, you can configure this however you want. Um, so at that point, once you meet the criteria of RPM and throttle position, it's just going to use this table and it's going to ignore this table. I have never used any of these combination modes. I have, however, done very similar things using custom tables. The difference with a custom table is it's gonna be an offset though. So say this part of the map is where you're having problems. You could go into a custom table, create a fuel flow offset, and then offset based off of these numbers. So if you wanted to take two pounds per hour of fuel out, you could do that. Uh, but doing it this way, again, once you go into your alpha end height, idle fuel you basically have your own fuel table so it is not a modifier it's just the actual table and then we already went over volumetric efficiency based uh, so then the last option is VE combo which is exactly the same as the other combo mode with the exception of being is now our fuel table is in volumetric efficiency so then we go to our alpha N idle fuel uh, you can see we have our separate fuel table as well and I would have assumed that this would have been in volumetric efficiency to match the fuel table, but apparently it's in pounds per hour as well. So I've probably looked at hundreds, if not thousands of different files from different tuners, different people, and I have yet to see anybody use one of these combo load sensing options. Basically everything that I see is probably 60 to 70% speed density, another 20% VE based, and then a very small number of Alpha N cars. And now that I think about it, I've never seen a Terminator X car running an Alpha N, I don't think. But over with HP and the Dominators, it's pretty common, especially the nitrous combos, you know, the max effort, basically naturally aspirated type combo. You know, obviously they're not naturally aspirated because they're running a bunch of nitrous through them, but you're building the engine to make as much power as it possibly can make, uh, which usually is going to result in a camshaft that uh, kind of wants to be an asshole. Uh, an Alpha N can really, really help with that. 
the concept of some of these combo things uh, makes a lot of sense uh, for idle and cruising. I'm just gonna go alpha N for the, the whole deal. Okay, just to recap all of the different load sensing types, ignoring the combos. Basically, we're gonna have alpha N, which is gonna be throttle position based, which you're very rarely gonna use unless it's a very extreme combination. So really our two choices are going to be speed density or volumetric efficiency. In my opinion, speed density is the simpler way of doing it. You're doing the math on the front end yourself. You simply increase the fuel flow numbers and you deliver more fuel flow to the engine. With volumetric efficiency, you're entering more information in on the front side as far as engine displacement, fuel injector characterization, injector flow rate, intake air temperature, target air fuel ratio. And once you can calculate how much airflow is going into the engine, then you can calculate how much fuel flow is going into the engine. It might take a little bit more to wrap your head around how it works. There's a whole bunch of complicating slash contradicting math that goes on in the process. Luckily, the ECU is doing all of that work for you. Uh, so once you have a very basic understanding of how the math is happening, you don't need to do the math, but then you can make sense of, of what's happening in the background. It makes the numbers in the table much smaller, uh, which means you're gonna be a lot closer as a starting point no matter what. With pounds per hour or speed density, you're kind of starting from scratch. If you have an idea how much horsepower the car makes, you might be able to get into the ballpark. But with volumetric efficiency, it doesn't matter what kind of engine it is, how big, how small, how extreme, how mild, you could basically just highlight the entire fuel table, type something like 50 or 60 in it, and the thing's gonna start and run. Uh, as to where you, you know, type in some arbitrary number into a speed density. What a loser!